Well, thank you uh, very much, Brian, for that uh, introduction. Uh, but no thank you for revealing the fact that uh, I still am scrounging to make a living. <laughs> still, still striving to get on the Forbes 400 richest list. And it's been, been a lifetime pursuit. But I've been, it's a great honor to be here today. And anyone who despairs about the future of the world, the future of the country, should listen to what you have seen today. There is hope. And I've been asked today to speak about what is finding the right priority and starting a business. The key thing in success in business, a durable success, is really quality. Having a sense of a higher purpose in what you're doing. My grandfather was an immigrant to this country. He came here about 120 years ago. And when he started Forbes in the first issue of the magazine, he said, the purpose of business is to produce happiness, not to pile up money. In his case, it was giving people the information and analysis to get ahead, to succeed. That was his purpose. And in free markets, you ultimately succeed by meeting the needs and wants of other people. Even if you're that caricature of somebody who lusts for money and wants to, you know, the kind that makes babies cry and dogs bark when you walk down the street. <laughs> even, if, even if that kind of person, you don't succeed in a free market unless you provide something that somebody else wants. You, can, they, you persuade them that the product and service you're offering is something that they need and want. Now, Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, was once asked if he did marketing surveys. He said, no, because people don't know what they want until I show them. <laughs> Not lacking in self-esteem. <laughs> but he's making a very useful point, putting something out there. You think people want it? You hope they want it. They may not have known it before, but you're making that offer. You're putting yourself out there. Now, I know that there's not much access, hardly no access to the internet for many people here, and I hope that with brains and technology, there'll be more and more access curated so that you can see, many of you can see, what others who have been in your condition have done when they got out and built a new life. And one, one article you should try to get a hold of was written by a man named Koss Mart. It's entitled, How I Became an Entrepreneur After Serving a Four-Year Prison Term. And one of the points he makes is that you need a sense of a higher purpose, that you're not just doing a product or service, but you have a sense that this is something special. In his case, when he went to prison, he was grossly overweight. He was told in five years he was going to be dead unless he did something. So he worked out and developed a regimen. And when he got out, he started a business and training boot camp to lose that weight, turn fat into muscle. He had that sense of higher purpose. A friend of mine, our publisher, Rich Carlgaard, talked about a fellow he knew, an insurance agent, sold life insurance, wasn't doing very well. And then he went to a funeral of one of his clients, died at a young age, heart attack. One of the kids said, at least we don't have to worry about our financial future. And suddenly that agent realized selling life insurance was not just selling a product, but selling security when disaster strikes. He felt that higher purpose. Peter Drucker, the late great management guru, once said, every organization should ask itself, what is your purpose? What is your mission? What is it you're trying to achieve? And when you do that, then you have that sense of purpose, and success can flow from it. Take Walt Disney. When he created Disneyland, amusement parks in those days were considered decrepit, dirty, bad food, rigged games, something no reputable person would go near. They all thought he was nuts, but he had that vision that you could create happiness, that vision that you create something and people could leave this world and have a great time with them and their kids, not just kids, but adults for everybody. He barely survived. The company nearly went bankrupt because of the money he poured in because of that vision. Judy Faulkner, this youngster, she was one, unusual for a girl. She was interested in math, took computer science when it was just starting, eventually merged it with medicine, created the biggest company today in healthcare records called Epic. But she had that passion, something you're interested in, and then you run with it. And that's key. You have to find something you want to do 
something that you want to do every day. It's like preparing for athletics. There's no real glamour in preparing for an athletic event or a game, a lot of grunt work, a lot of sweat, but you know there's a purpose in what you're doing. In business, that sense of higher purpose can be immensely helpful because when you go into a business, there is just simply tons of unglamorous work, tons of tedious things that you have to do. Getting the right IT system, communication system, supplies, bookkeeping. Got to make sure the bookkeeper isn't stealing from you. That happens from time to time. Got to be aware of that. Contracts, lawyers, taxes, regulations, rent. If you have to rent something, you can't work out of your apartment or your home or somebody gives you some space. Personnel, employees, constant challenge dealing with people. Getting the right people, training those people, getting them to have that sense of purpose, retaining them, supplying them with pay and benefits that keeps them there. It also helps immensely if they pick up from you, sense from you, that higher purpose in the product and service you're offering. Then they'll go that extra mile when you need to get something done. They feel there's something bigger. They're part of something that is really positive. And they'll, they, they, they may not always go that extra mile, but the key thing is getting those people in the right position. Somebody may be no good at sales, but great in engineering or software. Got to find that right, and it's constant, assessing where they really fit. And sometimes people don't have the right work ethic. They come to their work, they want to play with their handhelds, and you got to make, no, not on my time. <laughs> and, you have to, and you have to convey that sense. This is a two-way street. If your business succeeds, they have a chance to succeed. Their success is your success, and vice versa. It's reciprocal. It's not zero sum. You've got to convey that. And sometimes, to be blunt about it, you just have to work with people you may not like, <laughs> whether employees, vendors, customers, clients. This gets something about free markets and humanity. They're saying free markets, oh, commerce, not human. No, it is human. You may not love your neighbor, but you sure want to sell to your neighbor. <laughs> Find out how you get to that neighbor. And that's, that's what you have to do. Try to figure out how do you appeal to people to get them to buy what you're offering. And patience, working with people, working with customers. And the blunt truth is, some people are just jerks. You know, you just have, you just gotta have, have, have the patience to realize that and don't let it get you down. And you also have to accept rejection. Selling life insurance, for example, cold calls, rejection all the time. It's not personal. That's why if you're in that business, Companies often look for athletes. Why? Because athletes are accustomed to discipline. Athletes are accustomed to working out, working with teams, something bigger than themselves. That's the kind of discipline you want in a business like that. And sometimes you're going to fail. Whether it's in athletics, you lose a game, you may fail. Steve Jobs, for crying out loud, was so bad as a personality. If you took his name away and gave us characteristics of human relations, They'd say, keep this guy away. <laughs> he, he, he was stealing people's ideas, putting people down, impossible to work with. He was fired from his own company by the age of 30, before the age of 30. For a dozen painful years, he learned how to be a successful leader, learned how you keep talented people together, learned to give them that sense of higher purpose. And that's something to keep in mind when you go out and start something. You don't know it all at once. You're going to learn. You're going to learn. Constant learning. So don't feel bad if you don't know it all. Steve Jobs didn't, so don't feel bad if you don't. <laughs> the, other thing is, the other thing is help. Sometimes you have partnerships, like Henry Ford had a partner with James Cousins, Bill Gates, Allen, Paul Allen. Sometimes you have partners, people who can supply something you don't have. Walt Disney, what saved him, Walt Disney went bankrupt once. What saved him was his brother, brilliant businessman. Walt had the creative ideas Roy Disney, his brother, helped make sure they didn't go bust trying to make these ideas a reality. So you have to get that capital and profit. Profit is not bad. Profit is the resources, like a crop. When you grow crops, you don't eat all the food. You want to save seed corn for next year to grow more food. Same thing with profit to grow your business. So and the other thing, finally, is cash flow. It sounds simple, cash flow, but always pay attention to it because it ruins more businesses. You start to do well, the cash is coming in, you think things are great, and then suddenly you find yourself broken, you don't understand what, what, what happened here. What happened here? Got to keep that very careful. Let me just read a quick story. My grandfather started the business, great success in the 20s, nearly went bust during the Depression in the 30s. My father worked in what they called the mail cage, where they sorted mail each day. This was back in the 1930s. 
And each day, my grandfather would come, the bookkeeper was in the, in the next office, open office, and say, Mr. Forbes, things weren't good today. And finally, the bookkeeper said, Mr. Forbes, I've got great news for you. We made a profit this month. My grandfather looked at him and said, young man, I don't give a damn what your books show. How much money do we have in the bank? <laughs> Useful lesson. So the bottom line, the bottom line on all of this is, have that sense of purpose. No, you may not succeed the first time or the second time. Henry Ford went bust twice, twice. But the key thing is having that sense of purpose and conveying that sense of purpose, learning to work with people, all kinds of people. And remember, if you do well, you make it possible for others to do well. It's reciprocal, working together, and good comes from it. Thank you very much. Great honor to be here. Thank you.